we're back. It's been a while, but we have not forgotten about you. We've been working on a top secret project, but today we're letting the cat out of the bag. One of the most common requests we get is for longer, more detailed videos on really any given subject. But one of those subjects that pops up a lot is engine repowers. Well, starting today, we're going to satisfy both of those requests. For the next three episodes of the Jarrett Bay Insider, we'll be covering the complete process of repowering a boat right here at Jarrett Bay. We'll look at everything from removing the old engines, installing the new ones, and you get to come along on the sea trials. Oh yeah, and back to our secret. It's actually two secrets. The first is that the Repower will be the first boat in the water using the brand new C32B 2400 horsepower engines from Caterpillar Marine. The second secret is that the boat is our own, Jared Bay Hole number 48. Now we're gonna save the reveal for the next episode, but we're gonna give you a little backstory on that right now. Hole 48 was splashed in June 2008. She's 70 feet long with a 20 foot beam. What's unique about Hole 48 is it was originally built as a test platform for another engine manufacturer. Going forward, it's gonna be the test platform for the all new C32B from Caterpillar. We learned a lot from this boat. It was the first boat that Jarrett Bay was able to send overseas to an actual tank testing facility. The data that we gathered from those tank testing led to our new hull bottom, which improved upon an already great hull bottom. At the time we splashed hull 48, she had a top speed of 48 knots. That was the fastest conventionally driven sport fisher at the time. This is really awesome because we get to take the data from the original engine manufacturer's test platform and compare it with the C32Bs. But the exciting thing about repower like this is you never really know how much performance you're really gonna gain. We're really excited to find out. I'm in the engine compartment of hull 48, so you can see a lot's going on in this boat. It's getting a full restoration. You can also see the engines have already been removed. That seems like the first step in the process of putting in new engines, but the fact is, is there's a lot of engineering that goes into it before that can take place. When considering a repower, especially if you go up in horsepower, there's a lot of items that have to be considered and that's basically everything that's connected to the engine. The more horsepower you have a different exhaust, a newer engine, you have different back pressures that you have to meet. The shaft, when you put more power through the shaft, it has to be strong enough to be able to withstand the torsional rotation and, and the torsional shear that is applied to it. And if it's enough horsepower, then you got to increase the shafts. When you increase the shafts, the struts and the shaft tubes, bearings and all have to be replaced. At that point, you got to go ahead and get a new propeller. And in most cases, turn and get a whole new rudder as well. Another item to consider is the, the controls and the electrical side of the engines. Every wire that is from a previous engine, that's all new wires and brains of the operation that have to be replaced. Throttle quadrants and the station selects down to the, the, the displays themselves that let you interact with the new engines. It certainly has a snowball effect on things, especially if you're going from a lower horsepower engine to a higher horsepower engine. Once we've determined that we can do it, then we have to figure out how to do it. And in Sport Fishers, the engines are under the salon. Naturally, we have built-in hatches. We saw those out. Seems like a pretty simple step, except for one thing, and you might have already guessed it, the hatch and the engines will not fit through the salon door. The solution? Sawzall. Yes, it hurts our feelings too, but with custom boats, that is all calculated into the equation when the boat is originally commissioned. The last step of that equation is to get the engines up out of the engine compartment and then on out of the boat. These engines by themselves are close to four tons. That is a lot of iron getting moved around in a confined space. The margin of error is very small. Damage or injury could happen fast. Obviously, this requires an experienced crew of mechanics working closely with the crane operator. And something less obvious is that the travel lift operator is an active part of that coordinated effort. Brian Wade, our lead mechanic, is like a general. He's the only person in the team that can see all of the workers and operators. He communicates with the crew in the engine compartment, as well as the travel lift operator and the crane operator. 
he ensures that everything happens exactly as it should. Once the engine is hooked to the rigging, it is lifted, and this is where the travel lift operator comes into play. The weight and size of the engine on the extended crane boom is a really awkward pendulum. At that point, the travel lift has considerably better precision control, so the crane holds still and the boat is moved away from the engine. Once the engine clears the remaining obstacles, the operator can swing the engine away from the boat and set it on the blocks, then repeat on side B. In a nerve-wracking sort of way, it's just that simple. Be sure to tune in next time as we reveal the boat for the first time and you get to see these engines going into that boat. It'll be a good time. We're always happy to have you with us. Please comment, share with your friends, and we'll catch you next time.